So now it comes down to uh, integration of uh, natural human systems and the tools used for doing this. All the IPCC reports you see, especially uh, till the last one, had some aspects of human impacts on the Earth system, but not a complete uh, societal model or uh, human dimension into it, more like the Bretherton diagram, w which we call Earth system model. So this is something uh, that is called uh, integrated assessment model, which is, for example, trying to use the uh, IPCC input uh, as external processes, models, and scenarios here to the Potsdam integrated assessment modeling framework and the Potsdam Earth model, which is a simplified version with some atmosphere model, ice sheet dynamics, and 3D ocean circulation, and also includes these uh, various uh, sectors uh, like uh, climate, water, agriculture, forest, cities, and so on. So the basic idea comes down to the fact that uh, both are very expensive to run computationally intensive, can take forever. Plus, you need a large number of realizations or scenarios for uh, making projections into the future because you have lots of assumptions on technology, population growth, renewable energy, uh, other geoengineering, for example, like carbon capture and sequestration, etc. <coughs> and the, uh, that's for the physical models, but for the societal models, the uh, question is about whether uh, individual behaviors can be observed in detail <coughs> and whether they add up to a society, which obviously they don't. And then all these other negotiations that happen based on uh, special interests of the countries and in, in terms of economic development, affordability of power, uh, renewable energy potential, and so on and so forth. So. Uh, this is why combining them both in on full scales is a huge challenge as of now. Uh, from the Brundtland, Lipo, Re, Brundtland report of 1987, uh, it was stated that environment is where we we all live, and development is what we all do in attempting to improve our lot within that abode. The two are inseparable, obviously. Uh, but natural and social sciences nonetheless have basically followed their own paths and their own specific issues, uh, whether it's modeling issues, science questions, how to solve them, what kind of data is needed, uh, how to serve the policy needs, etc., etc. Uh, Alvin Toffler wrote, uh, one of the most highly developed skills in contemporary Western civilization is dissection. We take a model and we split it up uh, into smallest possible components for better observations, better modeling, better theorizing, better validation, and so on. And we are very good at it. So, uh, in fact, we are so good that we often forget to put the pieces back together again. For example, a good climate scientist knows global climate, <coughs> But let's say focuses on the Indian Ocean, Indian monsoon, impact of the ocean warming on the monsoon, impact of the ocean warming on the cyclones, uh, and so on, but doesn't have the uh, global view of the details, nor the feedbacks with biogeochemistry and vegetation and connection of the Indian Ocean to the Southern Ocean, and so on. But can still be a legitimate climate scientist. So what? That's kind of dissecting the global climate uh, variability trend and change issue into a small piece and doing a great job of it. But then how do you zoom out? That's always an issue. So, for example, if you want to think about impact of climate change on human health, you have to start with the physical climate like rising temperature, more, more uh, extreme weather, uh, sea level rise, and so on. Then look at uh, manifestations into severe weather, impacts on uh, injuries, fatalities, mental health, uh, air pollution on asthma and uh, cardiovascular diseases, uh, and so on. All right? So there are now many entities like uh, UNESCO, International Council 
for the Union of Science or some such thing. This is recently renamed from ICSU, Belmont Forum, which is an international entity that uh, funds activities across uh, international boundaries. World Climate Research Program, which manages IPCC, in fact, IPCC is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, uh, which provides all these assessments every seven years, which is next one is due uh, in 2021. Uh, and Quest, which actually produced the books book we are using here, Quantifying and Understanding the Earth System. Okay, so we looked at the Bretherton diagram as the natural scientist's rendition of the Earth system, and this is the social process uh, diagram. So here are global scale environmental processes uh, with things like harvests, emission, pollution, environmental changes, modification of the environment, and then dealing with population and social structure including migration, political systems and institutions, uh, fund of knowledge and experience, preference and expectations, uh, putting in input also externally is the change, ex change in expectations, factors of production and technology and economic systems. So you can see how different this is compared to the Bretherton diagram, which is the wiring diagram for the anthroposphere as an external forcing with atmosphere, biosphere, cryosphere, hydrosphere, uh, lithosphere, and so on. Okay, so how to bring these two together? That's always the big challenge. Uh, Gilbert and R. Weiler uh, state that social sciences are not a pre-science waiting to approximate the state of the natural sciences via more and more discovery and mathematization of the laws of social realm. Social, uh, the natural sciences always worry about fundamental principles like Newton's laws of motion, Navier-Stokes equations and so on to build their models and then biology comes in and they say biology has no first principles. Nature makes the rules and biology finds the loopholes. That's already difficult enough. Now you try to add social sciences. Mm. Okay? For interactions between social and earth sciences to succeed, a certain level of tolerance and mutual understanding will be needed. Right? Unfortunate that we have to state it. This is from uh, Liverman and uh, Roman Cuesta. But this is real. When the two disciplines are so uh, uh, separated in terms of their languages, practices, expectations, goals, narratives, and so on. It's not easy. So this is a generic representation of integrated assessment models which try to bridge this gap. Not completely, but they simplify, typically simplify the Earth system and focus on the socio-economic aspects. So here, integrated assessment model uses the biophysical systems like the Earth system. So it's climate carbon cycling, atmospheric chemistry, ecosystem, hydrologic cycles, nitrogen cycle, and feedback with human systems like energy economy, population, technological change, agriculture, transport. So their goal is on scenarios focused on this with these largely as input, sometimes with some iterations, with a full uh, uh, Earth system model in some occasions, as we will see uh, when we look at how IPCC scenarios were developed, for example. So this goes into regionally resolved greenhouse gas emissions, land use projections, socio-economic development pathways, which we will look at, information about sectoral impacts. Okay, so we are being a little uh, uh, thin on details here, but I'm just trying to give you the idea of the two spheres, uh, the human sphere, anthroposphere, and the Earth system, and how they cannot really function without each other if we want to worry about the trajectories of the Earth system into the future.